Uruguay is a country with 3.5 million inhabitants with a strong concentration of population in Montevideo, its capital. Being the second smallest country in South America, Uruguay has coastline on the Atlantic Ocean and is located between Argentina and Brazil. Its GDP per capita is over $16,000. Uruguay is ranked first in democratic stability in Latin America and has the lowest corruption index. Uruguay's productive matrix has always been related to agribusiness. The country has launched a strategic plan focused on creating the proper conditions for an oriented sustainable development. With a high literacy rate, free secular and compulsory education, Uruguay has taken digital inclusion as its flagship. It has the first submarine fiber optic cable that connects the Americas and enhances Uruguay's connectivity. More than 80% of households have access to the internet. It has developed digital inclusion programs such as One Laptop Per Child for Early Ages and the Ibirapita Plan focused on senior citizens. Uruguay is a country that promotes equality among its citizens with the largest middle class population in Latin America, ranking among the top in the welfare index. Uruguay, a natural, innovative, and entrepreneurial country. So, I am, I am Agustina Sartori. I, I am Uruguayan. I actually have been living in San Francisco for the past five years. Um, I studied engineering and uh, computer science back in, in Uruguay. And I'm going to tell you the story of Uruguay and entrepreneurship through my own story. So, oops. I think it's going by itself. Okay, so if, if we think about entrepreneurship in Uruguay, entrepreneurship in Uruguay started around 15 years ago. And it started first guided mostly by the private sector. Then the public sector joined. This was with, with the Inter American Bar on Development and FOMIN. This was 2001. Now, in, in 2000, there you go. Um, in 2007, so fast forward, Programa Emprender was formed. And Programa Emprender had the focus of actually generating awareness on entrepreneurship in the country. And the reality was that at that time, entrepreneurship was not really a thing. If you were studying engineering like me, the goal was to go work with the, for, the, with the, for the big corporations like IBM. That was the maximum thing you could aspire to do, right? But the reality is this program generated awareness. And it was around that time that I asked my mother if she could save me these coffee mugs that actually came for free with the coffee. I accumulated six of them. And I told her that one day I would take them to my office. This was my dream. I said, I want to start a company one day. I was in the second year of college of engineering. So in 2010, this happened. I was doing my final um, project of engineering, and we had to build a prototype. Everybody was just building a prototype. It was a project. But I said, this is the opportunity to build our company. In 2008, going a bit backwards, the ANI was created. It was the first seed investment fund in Uruguay. ANI is one of the best institutions that exist out there that support entrepreneurs. They give access to capital, they help you to prototype, and they help you grow your business. It was that time when we decided to apply to ANI. We applied to ANI and they gave us money to start to build our company. I remember the moment I closed my eyes and I see myself in my house when I received the call from ANI. And they told me, you got the funding. And again, my mom told me, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to start a company. And this is how it started. So Annie is giving you the first push to take the decision and to do it and to have something and someone who you can rely on. Now, in 2011, something else happened. This network of entrepreneurship started consolidating in Uruguay. And it was not only these isolated institutions, but really it was universities, co-working spaces, incubator that was supporting the entrepreneur along the path. For us, it was the University of Montevideo. They gave us an office inside the university. It was something unprecedented. 
The university gave us an office next to the dean's office that was quite a big of a deal for the university. And we were there for two years. They gave us mentorship and they helped us and gave us a space to be able to start a company there. Now, in 2013, other things happened. And in the region, as somebody mentioned, in Chile, Corfo had been a great, great investor and great supporter of entrepreneurs. We participated of Startup Chile, of a program with a U Uruguayan US Embassy in Uruguay, where they took us for a month to Silicon Valley to learn from entrepreneurs there. And I realized there was something else, that we had something in Uruguay that we were developing great things, but the market is too small. As a Uruguayan entrepreneur, you need to look outside always. Like, you can't rely on the local market. It's not like Brazil, like we just listened, right? It's very different. So angel investments started consolidated in Uruguay at the same time. And there were funds created combined with like public and private co-investment funds. And we received the first investment from one of those. So uh, another thing that happened in the next year was that Uruguay started investing on these new pilot programs with other institutions that existed out there. So an example was plug and play with Uruguay 21 we actually went to plug and play and, stay, and stayed three months in Silicon Valley. That's what, that was the first time that actually we spent time there. And spending time is one of the most valuable things because you get to understand the market. You get to understand what do you need to do to actually get there. And what happened... <laughs> what happened was that that planted a seed and we were like, okay, I, at that time, deeply believed that the only way our technology would get out there and the only way we could innovate globally was actually being there. Being there, but just myself. Our company actually is all based in Uruguay, except for me. We were doing all the development down in Uruguay and I was there trying to get funding, I was there trying to get clients, because the US market is where the innovation for a lot of the companies is created. Annie, has invested in more than 300 projects. They actually, in the last three years, um, it has been like so much that they ha have helped the ecosystem. They are a key partner. And you can see that like every $1 that Annie invests, $19.2 are returned in taxes. It was at this time that Annie inv invested in us again. So Annie doesn't help you once. It helps you in your journey. And it was at that time that we got accepted into 500 startups. Getting into 500 startups and spending six months in Silicon Valley meant a lot. It meant learning how things actually work there. After going through 500 startups, really what happened was that we raised funds in Silicon Valley. But the ecosystem in Uruguay are the ones that allow entrepreneurs to learn and grow. They gave us access to all of that. They allowed us to be there at that time, in that moment, in the right place. So fast forward, we raised money in Silicon Valley from several investors. We grew our company in the United States, having a lot of clients in the US. And of course, this was not easy. You can say it like that, but it was really hard. We spent three years there trying to close our first client, right? So it's hard. It's hard to raise money. It's hard to raise money as a woman in technology in Silicon Valley. And there's a lot of obstacles. But the reality is like these institutions are the ones that maintain you alive and keep on helping you while you are there trying to achieve your dream. So last year, this is a photo of my team in Chicago. It was 2 a.m. and we were preparing for a huge presentation. This was the time where all of our, our effort that we did was going to be right there put, in, put to proof the next day. We were in Chicago because our main client, Ulta Beauty, was evaluating acquiring our company. And what happened? In October, Ulta Beauty acquired our company. They are the biggest, if you don't know about Ulta, they are the biggest US retailer, beauty retailer. So this was quite a big deal. It was quite a big deal because to start with, Ulta Beauty is a US company. They don't have presence outside of the US. And in this process, which was eight months of due diligence, of technical due diligence, where they asked us of, for our vision, where they were testing everything about us. 
At the beginning, they thought we were just a technology. And then they realized this was not true. They, then they realized we were not an outsourcing company. We were a company that brought vision, we were a company that brought value, and we were a company that they needed to innovate in the future. My main investor, actually, in this process, it, it's interesting because I never went through an acquisition process, right? So you would think, what was I doing negotiating the whole acquisition with this public big corporation, right? Most of my investors were like, you can't do this. You don't know how to do this. You've never done it. You can't do it yourself. And it was my main investor from the US that I actually met in Uruguay randomly in an event that told me, Agustina, you need to do this. I'll be there with you so that you don't fuck up. <laughs> Those were the words he used. But you need to do this because there's no one better than you to be talking to them because you know them and they trust you. So the knowledge and the experience somebody external can add it's just like, it's so much more the trust that you can generate. So that, again, gave me that special push to say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. And it happened, right? And, and looking backwards, it's, it's crazy that it did. But the reality is that we created something special. And they acquired a company, as I mentioned, not only because of our technology, because of our team. We bring leadership, we bring guest experience, we bring very focused capabilities on AI and AR, and we have a great cultural fit. The cultural fit piece was key. They were looking at us, and again, none of the executives have ever been to Uruguay. Isn't that crazy? But they took this decision because they saw something else, and bringing talent and bringing possibility to, this, to these kind of companies is amazing. Ulta Beauty, as a summary, they have like more than a thousand stores, more than 500 brands. They're, they have retail stores all over the U.S. in more than 50 states. Um, and they are a very fast-growing company if you look at the, at the market. <laughs> so the reality is that we are creating innovation from Uruguay, right? We are creating AI and AR, and our responsibility is to be the guardian for innovation, to bring balance and creativity, and actually being able to put up with that structure and work on a way that a, that a startup works. And we are the ones that were in the cooperation of what's coming next. And we are doing this with a team based in Uruguay. So, The reality is that I think that sharing, learning, and understanding what is the role of Hispanics in the world is important. It's important, and it's important to tell these kind of stories because this is one of many. But people don't see them, so if they don't see them, they don't believe this can happen. I sometimes feel like I, feel like I have a key, and I went to the US and I started opening doors to show how amazing things can be, and to show how amazing a team can be. So we are the ones that need to be the agents of change. We can create a world with equal opportunities that embraces diversity. And I, I like very much this phrase, which is, a solitary fantasy can transform one million realities. I sometimes feel that my story is not my story. It's Uruguay's story. It's the Latino that lives in the United States story. It's the woman in tech story. This inspires others. This is a proof that the ecosystem that Uruguay built works. And the reality is that all of us have our own coffee mug, right? But in Uruguay, for an entrepreneur from Uruguay, it's these organizations that give us the wings that allow us to learn how to fly. Thank you.